So Dr. Rao, you, you know, an expert in dyssynergic defecation, taught many gastroenterologists what they know about, about this issue. Um, what do you see as kind of the latest advances in treatment for this, this problem? So thank you, Chinel. That's, that, that's something very close to my heart, this whole area of dyssynergic defecation. Mm -hmm. I was one of the first people to describe this condition uh, way back in 92 or so. You know, the meat of the story is that there are about 40% of patients with chronic constipation have inadvertently developed a faulty pooping habit. I mean, that's the best way to simply describe this. Unbeknown to them, they're totally, totally unaware that when they go to the uh, bathroom and try and attempt to pass stool, they are inadvertently pushing their own stool back inside or they're not able to relax appropriately or cannot generate a good push force to empty the stool completely. So this incoordinated process is what we call medically as dyssynergic defecation. And now, as I said, it affects 40% of patients with chronic constipation. It's a big number. We're talking about between 40 to 50 million Americans potentially with constipation. So about 10 million or so have this problem. Very few of them come to see you and me. So they're trying to get, they're trying to get help everywhere they can. And then what is interesting is something that you asked in the beginning is, you know, what do you do when you have a patient with a refractory constipation? The first thing I want to know is, does that patient have dyssynergic defecation? Because you can take any amount of laxatives. All of them may work for a short while. Eventually, they will all fail if your outlet is blocked and obstructed and incoordinated. So this, somehow that process has to become more coordinated. And the only way it's going to happen is by learning a new way of pooping or the normal way of pooping. And that is what biofeedback therapy is. Biofeedback therapy is a way of, of helping individuals with dyssynergic defecation to understand what is happening with their body and to correct the dysfunction using standard visual, verbal uh, feedback tools uh, to actually correct it. So it kind of puts the kind of the the um, control maybe back in to patients' hands. And I think um, one thing that patients may have a difficult time with is finding the right person to help guide them through biofeedback therapy. I know a lot of um, a lot of phys physical therapists kind of perform this. Are there any recommendations you have for patients on how they can help um, find someone to help them with with biofeedback? Great question. You know, this is an area that has been uh, uh, plaguing us uh, for a very long time. So, you know, we developed biofeedback therapy. Initially, people didn't believe in it. Uh, insurance companies, some of them still don't believe in it. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, we, I was very fortunate uh, with National Institutes of Health funded me for, a, for one of the first studies um, in, where we actually did a comparative study standard treatment, which was even more than standard with, with laxatives and diet and everything. And then we had biofeedback treatment and we had a third group, which we called a sham therapy where patients came to the office, we put, put a probe in their rectum, but we did not teach them any, any of the active biofeedback components. So we did that study. And for the first time, we actually showed that biofeedback was far more effective than sham or with standard therapy. And then we had to go to the next length of trying to see what else we can do. The, the challenge is what you just brought up. You know, who are the people who are able to provide this treatment? And there are very few, you do it, we, we do it, but very few of us do it. But then many of us also rely on physical therapists. Now, physical therapists are, are a very important group of individuals who truly help us in the management of, of a number of uh, pelvic floor dysfunction disorders, uh, whether it's pelvic pain issues, urinary incontinence issues, stool incontinence or fecal incontinence issues, and so on. But one area where I find the physical therapists are significantly lacking is in treatment of dyssynergic defecation. And I think it stems from multiple revenues. It's not, I mean, their heart is in the right place. So there are some who are really quite good. When they are with their limited tools, 
they are able to connect with their patients and they're going to help them. But the vast majority, I think, are struggling with this. And that is in part because of one of the points you were really making earlier on is lack of good equipment. And that has been um, something that has bothered me and continues to bother me even today. So we've been toying with this idea. I've been knocking on multiple doors. Every uh, equipment manufacturer that I know of um, every time they ask me for to do something, that's the first thing I bring up. Hey, why are you going to come up with this thing? So mm -hmm. some people have given me lip service. Some people have given me a little bit more. But the sad story is not much luck. But there is a silver lining in the story. And that is uh, someone um, has taken up this challenge. And, and I've been advising this small um, company and they have developed now what I think is the best prototype device for biofeedback therapy. And it is a standalone exclusive biofeedback therapy device. It's not connected to ARM and things like that. But the beauty of this system is there are no wires or anything like that. It's just the device you place the device inside the body, and then the device communicates with a phone app. So you will receive feedback through the mobile phone app and or, or an iPad, whatever you like. And so this device hopefully will be one that can be used in office or at home. Patients can take it home and practice this. The third useful thing about this device is it has a voice guided instructions. So you don't need a therapist. I mean, you, you actually need one, but I'm just saying that it literally prompts you practice. Yeah. Have you do what you are supposed to do next and next and next and next. So 15, 20 minute program, uh, you do it at home and then you practice it. And then you come back, let's say once a week or once in two weeks to the mm -hmm. hospital where the nurse and therapist can review it and then give you new things and you go back and practice at home. So this kind of a hybrid model where you have a office plus home biofeedback, I truly think is the best way to correct this problem and solve it. But by extending this into the community, making the patients more responsible for this, and they can do it probably a little bit more in their own environment, more comfortably than coming to a hospital environment, I think we will win this battle at the end of the day. So I have that real strong hope that this prototype will work, or hopefully will work. We'll have some results, I'm sure, in a year or so. But we're just beginning the clinical trials with this prototype. And, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that uh, we will have to develop this. So once that kind of a tool becomes available, the physical therapist will solve this problem for us. Mm -hmm. I am very sure this is the kind of thing that they are really missing. They don't have the tool. They have the heart at the right place. But once they have something like this, I think they will crack it for us. Yeah, I can't wait for that if that's available. I would say that I um, I work with physical therapists here at UVA, and I actually did an investigation on what the training is in general for dysenergic defecation with all of the PT schools in Virginia. I found out they all, they don't get a lot of training in their basic uh, degree in this issue. And so they have to go to extra sessions, extra training. So you really have to find, you know, when a patient has seen a physical therapist and they said they had biofeedback, it's really important to understand exactly what exercises and what therapy they had before you determine if they, you know, biofeedback has failed. Um, I I'm sure a lot of pelvic floor PTs would be really happy to have that. I agree. I agree. Um, well, I think kind of to summarize what we learned about dyssynergic defecation, we know biofeedback is effective. It sounds like there's some options on the horizon. I would say for patients that, you know, to pursue this therapy, if they need to pursue it, really try to have a good relationship with the therapist and your physician as well to kind of really work together and know that you're getting the right, the right therapy. Um, any other, any other thoughts you'd have for this? So I think, they, I, think, I think you summarized it well. I mean, the only thing to remember is biofeedback is a partnership. Okay. Uh, so I think there are, there are three players I usually say, you know, the most important player is really the patient. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of onus and responsibility on the patient. But we 
that is um, a physician or healthcare provider and a physical therapist or a nurse therapist that we have. Those are the other two parts of this, of this three, three team um, uh, approach or three pronged approach. So everybody plays their role, but we can help them. But the big onus and responsibility is, is on the patient and we can really change their lives. Second thing is, it is not a standard treatment. It's like a pill that you give for everybody. We have to really tailor uh, make the program for each patient based on the underlying issues that we have. So tailor make the program. So one approach will not work for everybody, but we have to keep changing the approaches. It's a multi-pronged approach, but it can be learned. Uh, if you have the focus and the determination and you comply with the treatment, you know, most hands, 70 to 80% of patients will succeed with this treatment. And sometimes initially we may have to give them drugs as well, but right. it is an approach. And there are some final word was, there are some subtle variations to this thing. I mean, we were focusing on the muscle dysfunction, but there is also another component, which is the sensory dysfunction. Yes, and there are two kinds of them. One group, they don't sense stool at all. So a large amount of stool will have to come before they sense. This is called the hyposensitive group. And the opposite is, where they sense even the smallest tool and they're the hypersensitive. Many of them are IBS kind of patients. Right. So there are some early biofeedback treatments directed at changing the sensory function as well. So that's a little bit still on the more uh, research and more advanced stages. But um, I think, you know, we can, in addition to correcting the muscle dysfunction, we may also have to correct sensory dysfunction yeah. if it is present. And so collectively through, we, if we can rehabilitate the entire sensory and muscle dysfunction, I think we should really be able to help their bowel problems.